Hello everyone, my name is Damela Babatunde and I'll be taking you this in one for one, which is the introduction to macroeconomics. As we all know, economics has two major branches, which is the microeconomics and the macroeconomics. When you hear the word micro, what comes to your mind? Micro is a small bit of something, while macro is like the larger part. So we'll be focusing on introduction to macroeconomics, which has to do with the whole economy, like the whole economy as the economy as a whole. So today we'll be looking at national income accounting. National income accounting, looking at some concepts in national income, looking at how to calculate national income accounting, looking at the circular flow of income. All right, going to the concept in national income accounting, we have GDP, gross domestic product. When you hear GDP, what comes to your mind? Gross, gross is like a sum of something. When you hear domestic, domestic is like something that is local. So GDP basically is um, the sum of all the final goods and services produced in a country at a particular time, usually a year. It is the sum of goods and services produced by the residents of a country. So countries that um, have foreign investment, like they have people investing in their country, they tend to have larger GDP. Why countries that, countries like Japan, US, that, that um, have foreign investment, like they invest in other countries, in other foreign countries, tend to have low GDP, but higher GMP because gross, uh, gross domestic product only, it captures the total and sum of all final goods produced in, by the residents, by the people living in that country at that particular time. Okay, and GDP, it consists of exports. You know, even when you produce the goods, final goods and services, it includes exports, but imports are not included because you are actually bringing in goods from, from other countries, but it includes exports because the goods are actually produced in your country, but you are taking it to other countries. The GDP is not a measure of the overall production, the overall production in an economy because it does not include the um, input of the nationals. It does not include the input of the nationals in the country. You no know, GDP only measures those that are living in the country. For, for instance, in Nigeria, for example, we have people that are not Nigerians that are living in Nigeria, and GDP only captures the um, the final goods that are produced in that country by the residents. So a better approach to measuring national income is um, GMP. GMP is the gross national product. This captures like is the sum of the final goods and services produced by nationals of a country at a particular time. This includes GDP plus um, the net factor income from abroad. You know, we have residents like Nigerians that are living abroad that have um, they have investments like they have things they do abroad and it actually contributes to the GMP of the country. GMP is gross national product, it's only by the nationals of the country and it includes GDP plus the net income from abroad, which can also be called the net factor income from abroad. So you ask me that if, um, if it's only produced by the nationals of the country, why is, you know, I said that GDP is by all the residents in the country. So where is the place to factor out those that are not residents, like those that are not nationals but are residents in the country? So to calculate the net national the net, um, the net factor income from abroad, which will add to your GDP to make your GMP. The net factor income abroad is the addition of the income generated by the nationals that are abroad, subtracted from the income that are generated from the residents in your country, but are not nationals of your country. As I said earlier, GMP, the gross national product, includes the final goods and services that are produced by the nationals in the country. And in economics, we have two types of goods. We have the consumer goods and the capital goods. The capital goods are the goods that are used to produce the consumer goods. Okay, just take for example, in a firm, we have plants, we have machinery. Let's, let's just take um, a, a bakery for an example. In the bakery, we have, um, I don't know, we have machinery, we have the machines that roll the flour, we have um, different equipment. So those, all those plant machinery, they are the capital goods that are used to produce the consumer goods. You know, we just buy bread. When I just go, I buy bread and I eat it. Bread is like the consumer goods. It satisfies my present needs. It satisfies my present needs. So capital goods are used to produce consumer goods. We have two goods, capital goods and the consumer goods. Capital goods are used to produce the consumer goods. Why the consumer goods are like the goods that are for my urgent satisfaction, like bread, like food and all. And we know that GMP takes into factor the capital goods, both the capital goods 
and the consumer goods. And this is not a good measure because you know that as assets, those capital goods are assets and there is a place for depreciation. What is depreciation? Depreciation is, you know, yeah, ah, Naira has depreciated, oh, Naira has depreciated, something has depreciated. Just use the word depreciate, depreciate. Depreciation is like a real, like a, a reduction in the value of an asset. It's like a reduction in the value of an asset. And when we hear Naira depreciate, it means the value of Naira has come down. It's like a reduction in the value of an asset. So over time, when I'm using my plant and machinery, it depreciates. It is not the value. It is not the value I bought it. It is not at the value I bought it again. So it depreciates every day. So to give room to make changes for this depreciation, the net national product it measures the total value of new goods. New goods. It factors out the depreciation. The net national product it measures the total value of the new goods and services available to the economy in a given year. It factors out like it takes out the depreciation. So to calculate our net national product, our NNP, it is GNP, gross national product minus depreciation, which is also known as consumer capital consumption allowance. But in most publications, in most textbooks, they know it as consumption of fixed capital. Moving on, NNP is a more meaningful measure of total output because it tells us how much total output we can consume without impairing our productive activity. You know, I, I said you that um, depreciation, NMP gives room, it factors out depreciation. That is, those, those um, assets, those goods that have gone, they, you know, they are not the normal value again. They, they've depreciated, they are not, their value has reduced. So NMP, NNP, Next National Product, gives room for, it gives room for, it factors out the depreciation. Okay, the GNP and the NNP, the Gross National Product and the Next National Product, they are valued at market prices. That is, the prices that consumer buy goods at the market. But then we see that this GMP and NMP, they contain like um, a variety of tax. We have value added tax, we have import duties, we have excise duties. And these taxes are they are known as indirect business taxes. And um, to factor, they do not actually measure an accurate, they do not give an accurate measure of the income produced by factors of production. Factors of production like labor, land, they do not give an accurate measure of the of the income produced by factor of production. But then, national income is developed to enable us to quantify the factor income. Factor income are the income that emanates from factors of production, like land, land, the income for land is, like the reward for land is rent, labor, we have wages, profits, and all. So national income helps us to quantify the income from factors of production. And to arrive at our national income, we have to, like, factor out our our indirect business taxes because national income is only is captures the income that emanates from factors of production, which is known as factor income. So to calculate our national income, we'll be having our NNP minus our indirect business taxes. Remember, we start, remember where we started from? We started from GDP, which is the sum of all the final goods and services produced by the resident of the country. Then we moved on to GMP, where it includes the net factor input, net factor. Net factor income from abroad, which is GNP cost to GDP plus net factor income from abroad. And remember that the net factor income from abroad is they are going to add the income from foreigners, from nationals that are in foreign countries, and you subtract the investment by the um, foreigners that are in your resident country. Now we moved on to the NMP, which is the GNP minus depreciation. We we saw that the GNP could not factor out the um, depreciation of the capital goods. So that capital goods, we have two types of goods, capital goods and consumer goods. NNP is GNP minus the depreciation, which is known as the consumer consumption allowance. Then national income is NNP minus the indirect business taxes. So moving on, we're looking at the measurements of the national income. There are three methods to which we can measure national income. We have the income method, we have the product method, we have the expenditure method. All right. Starting from the income method, the income method involves adding up all the incomes and by factors of production. Recall that I said earlier, factors of production, we have labor, land, land, labor, capital, entrepreneur, and the incomes from the factor of production, we have the reward for land is rent, for labor is wages and profit and all. So the income method is a way of calculating national income where we add up all the incomes by all the factors of production. We add up wages and salaries, we add up rent, we add up um, capital and all. So the factor, the fact, um, the figure is adjusted for stock appreciation and it gives us GDP as factor cost and not at market price. 
because it is measuring the factors of production, the income from the factors of production. That is the income approach. Moving on to the product method. The product method, it aggregates the values added at each stage of production, both in the real, real sector and in the service sector. In an economy, in any economy, we have two sectors. We have the real sector and we have the we have the service sector. The real sector are the sectors like that are in the they are involved in the production, in the main production of goods and services, like the manufacturing, the um, agriculture, those are part of the real sectors. While in the service sector, we have it inculcates those that provide services, just like government services, banking, finance, and all. So the product method is aggregate the values of each stage of production, either at the real sector or at the service sector. So the third method of calculating the national income is what is known as the expenditure method. When you hear expenditure, expenditure comes to the word expenses. So expenditure is like, expenditure method is, um, it sums up all the spending, all the spending of, of goods and services in the year of the total, in the year to obtain the total domestic expenditure. It sums up all the expenditure, but all the expenses, expenditure method captures all the expenses that by the government or private sector in that particular year to sum up the GDP. And to avoid double counting, expenditures on final goods and services are only expenditure on final goods and services. Okay, I said earlier, if you notice in my definition of GDP, GNP, I, I was mentioning final goods and services because this is one of the problem of national income, double counting. Okay, to avoid double counting, only final goods are measured. Only final goods are measured. They do not measure intermediate goods. Goods that are still going through the process are not measured because it will lead to double counting. If the goods are measured at their intermediate stage and they are measured again at the final stage, do not give to not give the country a like the GDP will, have, will to be overrated and all. So the goods are only measured, expenditure method, they are only measured at they're only measured on final goods and services. Alright, we have some problems in measuring national income. We have some problems in measuring, in measuring national income. As I said earlier, double counting is a, measure, is a major problem in measuring national income. That is why final goods are only what is measured. In our measurement of national income, we only measure final goods. Okay, this is my output. We only measure the output. We do not measure when the goods are still in their intermediate stage or they are still undergoing processes. We only measure final goods to avoid the problem of double counting. Also, we have non-economic activities. In national income accounting, only goods and services which are exchanged for money are taken into account. We only have goods and services that are exchanged into money. We have some non-economic activities like if I get married to my cook now, it's not adding anything to the GDP or, or the national income of the country because it's a service that is rendered for free. Any service that you render to yourself or you render to others for free is not included in the computation of national income. Only economic services that are exchanged for money are taken into account when measuring national income. Another problem of national income is the inadequate statistical information. You know that Nigeria has a problem of data. We do not have data. So there are inadequate statistical information as to whether some people pay taxes, you know, some, especially the wholesaler and retailer, they have to, they used to dodge from tax. So there's no, there's no, there's no adequate information. The, there's no adequate statistical information. Then we have the net income from abroad. In a country like Nigeria, there's no proper documentation from the, of the income received from nationals abroad. There's no proper doc documentation. So it is also a problem in measuring national income. Because when you don't have a proper documentation of the income you received from abroad, it is a problem. Then we have a, another one is the subsistence economy. Subsistence economy. In a subsistence economy, national income will not be accurately measured because if most of the population, most of the citizens that obtain are obtained, most of the citizens are, they are involved in subsistence economy, like subsistence farming, just me and for my family. National income computing, we only thrive in a commercial economy where people are doing more of their trading and everything, exchange for money, even though I'm, I have a farm and all, I'm doing it in exchange for money. So subsistence economy is one of the problems of measuring national income and it's a problem for African countries. Right, so those are the problems of national income. We have the problem of double counting, non-economic activities, subsistence farming, and all. All right, so the last point of our national income accounting, we are talking about the concept, talking about the measurements, we are talking about the problems. We'll be looking at the circular flow of income. Circular flow of income is just a way in which the, um, the, approaches, the approaches to national income are explained in the diagrammatic format.
Right, the circular flow of income it shows how income flows from the household to the firms and how the income flow back from the firm to the household. You can see from the diagram, the household supplies the firm the factors of production, which are land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. They also supply the firm factors of production, and the firm in turn pay income to the factors of production, which are the factor income. They pay the factors of production, rent, wages, interest, and profits. By that, income is going back to the household. And the firm makes use of these factors of production to produce goods and services. The firm makes use of the factors of production to produce goods and services. The household is still the one that buys the goods and services, and they make payments back to the firms. Like they pay for the goods and services to the firm. You can see that the income flows from the household to the firms, the, and the, from the firm back to the household. The household supply the firm. Um, factors of production. The firm in turn pays income to the household by paying them rent, wages, and interest and profit. The firm uses the factors of production to produce goods and services. They use the land, labor, capital, and entrepreneur to produce goods and services. And they also buy the goods and services from the firm and they make payment to the firm. So we've come to the end of um, the session for today where we talked about national income, talked about some concepts of national income like GDP, GNP. The gross domestic product, which is the GDP, the gross national product, the GMP, talk about the net national product, talk about the national income, talk about the problems encountered when measuring national income, talk about the three measures, the three approach to measuring national income, which is the income approach, the expenditure approach, and the product approach. And we ended it by explaining how the income flows from the household to the firm and how the circular flow of income, how income flows from household to firm, and how the income flows back from the firm to the household. Thank you for staying with me. If you have any questions, please do well to drop them in the comment section and to be surely be attended to. Do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to this YouTube channel so you can get to be notified whenever we release our videos. Thank you.